everyone. Welcome to Anacademy. My name is Shreyas. I'm an educator at Anacademy. You can follow me on the learning app where you can see my new courses, also courses by awesome educators. So now I am with a new lesson on the topic, the introduction to power plant engineering part one. The lesson is by the name binary vapor cycles. So let's get on to the topic and let's get on to the lesson. So what are the new outcomes of the lesson? Let's see it. And please don't forget to rate, review and recommend this course. And please don't forget to rate, uh, subscribe us on our YouTube channel. Thank you. So guys, let's get on with our course, Power Plant Engineering. I have given my introduction already. I'm a B Mechanical Engineering student. You can find me at the Anacademy User Platform, which is the above URL, which I am encircling over there. So let's get on with our course, Introduction to Power Plant Engineering, Part 1. So what are the target audience for this course? The target audience for this course consists of engineering students, general audience who are interested in thermal engineering topics, people who are interested in mechanical entities, people who are interested in energy resources and environmental enthusiasts. So what are the learning outcomes of this lesson? You guys will come to know the flaws of steam as working fluid in the power cycle, the characteristics of ideal working fluid for power cycle, vapor power cycle, what are binary vapor cycles, what are coupled cycles and the thermodynamics of Rankine Rankine coupled cycles. So let's get on with the lesson binary vapor cycles. So let's have a quotation before the starting of our lesson. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Let's move on. So what are the flaws of steam as working fluid in a power cycle? There are some certain drawbacks with steam as a working substance in a power cycle. The maximum temperature gained in steam cycles using the best available material is about 600 degrees centigrade, while the critical temperature is about 375 degrees centigrade, which actually necessitates large superheating and permits the addition of only an infinitesimal amount of heat at highest temperature. High moisture content is involved during the expansion of steam, uh, which is going in, uh, to be in higher steam pressures in order to obtain the higher mean temperature of heat addition. Thus, the use of reheat becomes necessary. Since reheated tubes are costly and the steam, plate, uh, steam plant layout becomes complex, the use of more than two, heats, uh, two reheats is hardly recommended. Also, as the pressure increases, the metal stresses increase and the increase in thickness of the walls of the boiler terms tubes, pipelines and so on is not in proportional or is not in proportion to the pressure increase but much faster because of the prevalence of higher temperature. It may be noted that high TM1 that is the temperature mean temperature of heat addition is desired for the high cycle efficiency. The need for high pressures is only forced due to the weak characteristics of the steam. If the lower limit is now considered, it is seen that the heat rejection temperature of 40 degrees centigrade and the saturation pressure of steam is 0 0.075 bar which is considerably lower than the atmospheric pressure. The temperature of heat rejection can still be lowered using some refrigerant as a coolant in the condenser. The corresponding vacuum will be still higher and to maintain such high vacuum in the condenser is a big problem. It is the lower temperature of heat rejection which is of real in, uh, interest and the necessity for vacuum is a disagreeable characteristic of steam. So this is a picture depicting steam. So let's move on to the characteristics of ideal working fluid for the vapor power cycle. The desirable characteristics of the working fluid in a vapor power cycle to obtain the best thermal efficiency are given as follows. The fluid should have high critical temperature so that the saturation pressure at the maximum permissible temperature that is the metallurgical limit is relatively low. It should have large enthalpy of vaporization at that pressure. The saturation pressure at that temperature of heat rejection should be above the atmospheric pressure so as to avoid the necessity of maintaining vacuum in the condenser. The specific heat of the liquid should be small so that little heat transfer is required to raise the liquid to the boiling point. The saturated vapor line of the TS diagram should be very steep, very close to the turbine expansion process so that excessive moisture does not appear during the expansion. The freezing point of the fluid should be below the room temperature so that it does not get solidified while flowing through the pipelines. The fluid should be chemically stable and should not contaminate the materials of construction at any temperature. The fluid should be non-corrosive, non-toxic, not excessively viscous and low in cost. The characteristic of such a hypothetical working fluid 
is approximated in the TS diagram which I will be showing in the next slide. Some superheat is desired to reduce piping losses and improve the turbine efficiency. The bounded area of the cycle is almost like a rectangle and its thermal efficiency is very close to the Carnot efficiency. So you can see here this is the ideal TS diagram of an ideal working fluid for a vapor power cycle. So you can see here it all it almost approximates a rectangle and you can see the 10 bar and 1.8 bar over here. So let's move on to binary vapor cycles. We know that no single fluid can meet all the requirements as mentioned above in the previous slides. Although in the overall evaluation, water is better than any other working fluid but at high temperatures. However, there are few better working fluids which are diphenyl ether, aluminium bromide and liquid metals like mercury, soda, uh, sodium etc. Among these, only mercury has actually been used in practice. Diphenyl ether could also be considered. At a pressure of 12 bar, the saturation tempers for water, aluminium, bromoid and mercury are 187 degree centigrade, 482.5 degree centigrade and 560 degree centigrade. This is the reason we use the mercury as the best uh, fluid for these vapor power cycles because its critical pressure and temperature are 1080 bar and 1460 degree centigrade. So how does this happen? In the low temperature rate, mercury is unsuitable because of its saturation pressure becoming low and it would be impractical to maintain such a high vacuum in the condenser. And because of this uh, various characteristics, the saturation of mercury is only 2.7 into 10 power minus 4 cm Hg. Its specific volume at such a low pressure is very large and it would be difficult to accommodate such a large volume flow. Thus, for these reasons, to take advantage of the beneficial features of mercury in the high temperature range and to get rid of its deleterious effects, we use mercury at the low temperature range and the mercury vapor which leaving the mercury turbine is condensed at a high temperature range and high temperature pressure. Thus, in the binary or two fluid cycles or two cycles which are working with two different working fluids are coupled in series and the heat rejected by one is being utilized by the other. You can see here this is the flow diagram of a mercury steam binary cycle. So you can see here the Hg turbine, the Hg boiler, the superheater, the economizer, all the parts of the boiler as well as the steam turbine as well as the gas turbine are present over here. So let's move on. The flow diagram of a mercury steam binary cycle and the corresponding TS diagram which I have already shown, they actually follow the simple Rankine cycle on the formula a b c d that is the actually i will show in the ts diagram in the next slide you can see the a b c d it actually shows the simple rankine cycle the heat which is rejected by the mercury during the condensation process is transferred to boil water and form saturated vapor that is the process 5 to 6 the saturated vapor is heated from the external source in the superheater that is process 6 to 1 superheated steam expands in the turbine and it is then condensed the condensate is then pumped to the economizer where it is heated till it becomes saturated flowing by, uh, by the outgoing flue gases that is process 4 to 5. The saturated liquid then goes to the mercury condenser steam boiler where the latent heat is absorbed. In an actual plant, the steam cycle is always a regenerative cycle with feed water heating but for the sake of simplicity, this complication has been omitted. To vaporize 1 kg of water, you need at least 7 to 8 kg of mercury which should be condensed. The first mercury steam cycle was proposed by Emmet in 1925 which was in actual commercial use for more than 4 decades. A series of such plants were developed by the General Electric of the USA in the 40s culminating in the installation of the Skiller 40 MW plant at Portsmouth, New Hampshire which went out loan in 1950 and the thermal efficiencies of these plants are high which are above 50% and mercury makes up the necessary thermodynamic constraints. So let's see here, this was the TS diagram I was telling, the ABCD, the process 5 to 6, you can see here, <coughs> the process 3 to 2 and the process 1 to 1. And this is the derivation, you get the Q1, Q2, that is the turbine work and turbine and the pump work here. So the head cycle is given by Q1 minus Q2 by Q1, that you can derive it as turbine work minus pump work by Q1. And the steam rate is given by 3600 by uh, turbine work minus pump work. So the energy balance, so how the energy balance of the steam condenser boiler or of the mercury condenser steam boiler which is given as m into hb minus hc equals h6 minus h5. 
So the M becomes H6 minus H5 by HB minus HC into kilogram per HG of kilogram per HG that is kilogram per mercury or kilogram per water. So let's move. So this is I was telling it gives on high thermal efficiency and these vapor cycles they had ne they had never attained wide commercial acceptance because there has always been the possibility of improving steam cycles by increasing pressure and temperature and by using reheat and regeneration. These are not used because mercury is expensive and limited in supply and and highly toxic. And because of the low latent heat of mercury, high mercury flow rates are needed and special precautions are necessary to prevent the leakage of mercury which results in high capital costs. So let's move on to coupled cycle. The mercury steam cycle represents two fluid cycles where two Rankine cycles have been coupled in series. The mercury cycle is called the topping cycle and the steam cycle is called the bottoming cycle. If a sulfur dioxide is added to it in low temperature range so that the heat released during the condensation of steam is utilized in forming sulfur dioxide vapor which expands in another turbine then the mercury steam sulfur dioxide cycle is a three fluid or tertiary cycle. Similarly for other liquid metals apart from mercury like sodium or potassium may be considered for a working fluid in the topping cycle. So in the next slide I will be showing the TS coordinates or the TS diagram of a sodium mercury steam tertiary cycle. So you can see here this is the steam cycle this is the mercury cycle and this is the sodium cycle. <clears throat> so let's move on to thermodynamics of Rankine Rankine coupled cycles. If two Rankine cycles with two different working fluids are coupled in series, the heat lost by one will be absorbed by the other as in the mercury steam binary cycle. So let the eta 1 and eta 2 be the efficiencies of the topping and bottoming cycles. Now, so let's get on with the derivation. So this is a simple flow diagram of two vapor cycles coupled in series. You can see the series coupling over here. So let's move on. You get the eta 1 is 1 minus q2 by q1 and eta 2 becomes 1 minus q3 by q2. So I can regram the equation and by this you will get the eta as 1 minus q3 by q1. That is 1 minus q1 into 1 minus eta 1 into 1 minus eta 2 by q1. So you actually regram the equation that is for n cycles which are coupled in series you get the n equals 1 minus 1 minus eta 1 into 1 minus eta 2 that is 1 minus eta equals 1 minus eta 1 into 1 minus eta 2. So for n cycles the overall efficiency would be given by 1 minus eta equals 1 minus eta 1 into 1 minus eta 2 into 1 minus eta n. So that can be written as 1 minus eta equals summation of n where i equals 1, 1 minus eta i that is total loss is equal to product of losses in all cycles in series. For two cycles coupled in series it may be given as eta equals eta 1 plus eta 2 minus eta 1 eta 2. Thus the overall efficiency of two cycles coupled in series equals the sum of individual efficiencies minus their product. Thus there is great uh, scope of improving cycle efficiency and achieving fuel economy using multi-fluid couple cycles and utilizing the favorable characteristics of these working fluids in different temperature ranges for power generation. If you can see by combining two cycles in series even if individual efficiencies are low it is possible to achieve a fairly high combined efficiency which cannot be attained by a single cycle. For example if eta 1 is 0.5 and eta 2 is 0.4 so eta becomes 0.5 plus 0.4 minus 0.5 to 0.4 that is 0.7. It is impossible almost impossible to achieve such a high efficiency in a single cycle. But for any sodium mercury steam tertiary cycle if eta 1 is 0.5 eta 2 is 0.4 and eta 3 is 0.4 again by substituting in the equation 1 minus 0.5 into 0.6 into 0.6 that is this equation summation you get it as 0.02 uh, 0.82 of course there are other losses which have not been considered here so thank you guys for listening to throughout this lesson any questions please leave those in the comments box below you can find me at the academy user platform which i am encircling over here and if you have liked the presentation please do rate the course review the course and recommend the lessons coming in the course or the presentations which you have liked in the course this is my academy user platform again. Have a wonderful day guys. Thank you.